What's going on guys? I'm Pinsetter1991. It's been years. Okay, not years, but it's been a long time. I got no excuse. I should have been making more videos. But anyways, today I'm going to be showing you how to draw this crazy house. Um, it's originally from the movie Series of Unfortunate Events with Jim Carrey. If you've seen it, you might recognize this house. Let's go over the materials. The paper I'm using is Arches Hot Pressed Watercolor Paper. I think it's 140 pound. I'll put that in the description. And I have some kneaded erasers, some compressed charcoal sticks and pencils, some white charcoal, a soft brush for blending, a watercolor brush, some watercolor paint, and then some extra fine point Sharpie markers. If you could get some of the colored ones, that'll help, but at least get one of the black ones. If you don't have all these materials, because uh, they're kind of sometimes they're hard to get, who cares? Just make use of what you've got. A lot of people really don't like working with paint. Uh, I'm sort of one of them. <laughs> I don't use paint very much. Um, so if you're one of them, then you don't have to use color at all. You could make the house black and white, make the entire drawing black and white, because that's basically what we're going to do. Um, the entire background, the cliff, is going to have pretty much no color. Um, just the house is what has the color in it. Right now I've just got a mechanical pencil and as usual I'm just doing a really basic outline of the cliff. Then I'm going to outline the house just to give myself an idea of where everything's going to be situated. The other thing I did you probably notice is on the right I printed off a reference image of this house so that I could just constantly be glancing over at it to make sure I'm getting everything right. Um, in the movie the lady that owns the house her name's Aunt Josephine so if you google a series of unfortunate events Aunt Josephine's house you'll be able to find the reference image or I'll put the link in the description below so that you can print it off so for this part I'm just using a mechanical pencil and once we start using the charcoal it's gonna get pretty messy and it's really gonna be hard to even see these original lines but it still helps you know when we're we're gonna start with the sky and the clouds and uh, you know you just at least you have an idea of where the house is and where you don't really need to put a bunch of charcoal down so there's the house. Um, you can see I didn't try to draw any of those wooden planks underneath or any fine details. I just made some of the basic shapes just to get started. So now we're going to start on the sky and the entire background is sky. You don't see any ocean or anything down below. Um, so we grab a piece of compressed charcoal and on a separate sheet of paper, a lot of you have probably seen this technique because I've used it in a bunch of my videos already. You put down a bunch of charcoal on a separate sheet of paper and then we're going to use a napkin, paper towel, toilet paper, whatever you want to use, some kind of you know paper material. Surprisingly toilet paper has worked the best for me. Um, but you're going to smear it onto the toilet paper or whatever paper you choose and then you're going to use that to put down the sky in the background because it really, really goes on just super smooth when you do it this way. You don't want to draw it directly on with like a pencil or anything. It'll be too choppy. Now, the other thing that I changed up uh, a little bit from the original picture is the background was pretty boring. It's just gray sky. And I decided to add in a bunch of clouds, make it kind of stormy looking. And uh, there's other reference images that I looked up. I didn't really print them out or anything. I just looked up a couple Google images on storm clouds just to give myself some ideas. And then I just went for it. Right here, I try something out just to see if it would work. Uh, this is actually a little trick I, <laughs> I kind of discovered by accident a few years ago. Uh, and it worked really good for making mountains in the background. So I figured, hey, I'll I'd try it out to see if it'll work with clouds. And it kind of does. 
what you do is you take a piece of paper, just scratch paper, and you tear it, make kind of like mountaintop, or I was, I was kind of going for cloud top shapes, and then uh, you put down the charcoal and it'll give you more contrast. But uh, this step isn't really that necessary. It works best for mountains, <laughs> is what I found out. But you could still do it. It still helps with getting a lot of contrast in there. But you got to go back and refine the clouds so that they don't look like mountains. I've gotten a few comments on just people that have had a hard time blending and getting it to be a really smooth sky background. And I think it mostly has to do with the paper that you're using because there's so many types of paper out there, it, it'll take a while to find the right one. Back when I first heard that people use watercolor paper to draw on, it just seemed weird. I thought, that's not right. <laughs> that's gotta, that stuff's for watercolors, for painting, right? But it actually works really good. Out of all the papers I've used, it's probably the best. Um, because I've seen in stores that there's paper made for charcoal, but it's it's just way too texturized. Really, really like lumpy kind of paper. Um, so you got to find something smooth, but not too smooth, because then you're getting into like scratch paper, office paper. That That's just, ugh, like you could use it if you don't have anything else, but I don't suggest it. So I'm going in with the General's charcoal pencil, just a soft one, to try and find some of those lines, because charcoal just gets really messy. It's Those original sketch lines are starting to disappear. There's a pretty good view of my head. <laughs> I've had pretty bad vision it's all right. My vision's not that good, though. You can see I wear glasses, and I've kind of gotten, like, accustomed to getting really close to my drawings and, like, really trying to see all the details and kind of put myself there. And it's just kind of like the natural process that I do. I th it's probably because of my bad vision, but I don't know. I do it all the time, though. So these are still kind of looking like mountains. I'm trying to blend them together to make them look more like clouds. But the really cool thing about using the toilet paper or tissue paper is that it's pretty easy to erase. Uh, so I go in with a kneaded eraser. This is a General's brand eraser. And I get comments on this all the time. People tell me they can't find these things. And that's... I don't know, that's surprising because I find them all at any art shop I go to, they've they've always got kneaded erasers. So I don't know if they're really hard to find in different countries, um, but you could probably s just search online for them if you have that problem. But the cool thing about these kneaded erasers is that the consistency, it's, it's like, I don't know, it's like Play-Doh, so you can shape it into any shape you want. So I kind of make like a flat, disc so that I can go along the bottoms of the clouds and add in these highlights. That's what I'm doing right now. So you can see once I move my hand, there we go, the cloud, it's starting to look more like a cloud. <laughs> Before it looked more like a mountain, you know. So that's a good thing about the kneaded erasers. You can do this with a regular eraser. It's like at the end of a pencil or whatever you've got. Just make use of what you've got. But if you can find a kneaded eraser, you'll have a lot more flexibility. So to me, it's starting to get a little bit too light, and this is 100% personal preference. I really like high contrast drawings, so a lot of people would be completely content with how it is, but um, 
I like a lot of contrast between light and dark, so I'm going to add more black in there to get that contrast that I like. I don't know why. Maybe it's from like all the Tim Burton movies that I've watched or you know, like Nightmare Before Christmas and all that stuff. But I've always loved a lot of contrast. So right here I'm going back in with some of the kneaded eraser to lighten up the tops of the clouds. And now I switch to another eraser that I didn't mention in the materials list. This is a really good one. It's actually a Faber-Castell brand eraser pencil. And I have it right here. It's called Perfection 7056. So if you look that up, Faber-Castell Perfection 7056, that is an awesome eraser to have. It looks like a pencil. You can sharpen it like a pencil, but it's, it's rubber inside. So it works just like an eraser, but you can have a fine, fine point tip on it. You see, I went through with the brush that is a Habico Duo Pastello. And these things I can't find anywhere. Like, uh, I had that one sent to me by the Nitrum Charcoal Company because uh, I think they were planning on selling them, so they wanted me to try it out, see how it, how it works. And I absolutely love that thing. I use it all the time because it works really, really well for blending charcoal. Um, However, I, I've never seen them anywhere else. I can't find them in any store. So you'll see me use it throughout the video. That's another thing you probably have to find online. Or the closest thing to it would probably be one of those makeup brushes. Uh, the really soft ones that they use to apply like foundation or whatever. That would probably do the trick. So now I start using a tortillion, which is basically the small version of a blending stump. It's made out of paper. Uh, and I use that because, you know, there's only so much detail you can get smearing it on with with the tissue paper. Uh, this, this has a really small point, so you can kind of go in and add more definition to the edges of the clouds. <clears throat> and uh, the reference image that I found online had a lot of, you know, really, really defined clouds and really dark edges. So I decided to use the Tortillion to be able to get the, the right values that I wanted and the, the definition that I wanted. I've seen packs of these in art shops. It's like five for a couple dollars. They're pretty cheap. Or um, I've actually seen people make them themselves, and I've never done that, but you can make them just by rolling up some paper. So I'm sure there's tutorials out there that would show you how to do it. This is the other thing that the brush helps with. When you use an eraser, this doesn't happen with the kneaded eraser, but pretty much any other eraser, you're going to get those little eraser, you know, like rubber shavings left behind. And those can be kind of a pain to get off your paper. So using the brush gets them off really easily. So this guy's pretty close to being done going to go back in with the charcoal pencil and find that outline that we made and make it darker just so I don't lose it. It's already pretty hard to see. So 
Now I start using that Faber Castell eraser to add some highlights into the cliff edge. And you really don't need to go into a lot of detail on the cliff yet. Because my general rule is I like to work by layers, you know, start with what's furthest away, the sky, then move to what's closest. But adding in at least the edge of the cliff will help us know exactly where the house goes and exactly where we should put all those little wooden stilts underneath it. Now I go back to the kneaded eraser and just kind of quickly go back through and add in some final details. We're pretty much done with the sky. I'm going to add some clouds in up top above the house and you can see how easy it is. It takes me, you know, just a few seconds with the kneaded eraser. That's why it's so such a nice thing to have. So try to get yourselves one because it's definitely going to come in handy. You might have noticed at the tops of just a few of the clouds down there, I added in a little bit of white charcoal to give a little bit of a brighter highlight on them. So you can do that if you want. But the sky is pretty much done. Uh, it's mostly just little touch-up fixes that I'm doing now. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video before it gets too long. In the next part, I will show you how to do the rest. We'll do the house and the rest of the cliff. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. You can apply it to any drawing you do when you want stormy clouds. Uh, please leave a thumbs up and thanks for watching.